Unless you live under a rock, you've probably seen images of the new Chinese tank shown on a train. Some images of this tank are kind of unique. Now, if we look at this thing like the Great Grantham might say from tip to butt, what can we surmise from these images? It looks like it has a muzzle reference sensor, a long thermal shroud that, trans that goes all the way down to the tip of the gun, a, what this could be is a smokeless extractor system, so the, the bore vacuator may be, it, it may be an Innie instead of an Audi, so to say. Um, it's an interesting design, something, it could be somewhat similar to the XM360 design, although kind of reverse engineered by China, but more to follow on that. You can see the gun mantlet, and then you can see what looks like it could be an automatic MRS update, or could be a laser rangefinder. Not really sure what this is on top of the gun mantle, but as we move backwards, notice that there's no, on the turret, there's really no clearly defined spot where there are, ex but there's an exposed optics package. Uh, not till we go towards the RWS, and then if you look into the RWS, the remote weapon system, you can see that this is probably set up for a 12.7, uh, basically a 50 cal, uh, the Chinese equivalent thereof. And then right below that, you can see that there is an EOIR ball on that, and it, it looks like it's on its own gimbal mount, so it's somewhat similar to the Commander's Independent Thermal Viewer. I'm not sure what the uh, the left and right azimuth traverse of this is, if it even has it at all. It might have a daylight camera and a FLIR capable camera as well. Um, not sure whether this thing is gonna have auto target track, but overall, if you look, starting to go down into the hole, you can see there's cameras all over the place. You can see that there's also an active protection system that seems to be integrated into this. You've got smoke grenade dischargers. You've got uh, what looks like it could be a data link antenna on the rear of the turret. You can see that there is a crosswind sensor to allow the computer to have ballistic inputs from meteorological data. Notice down on the hull there, there's two hatches. Now, it's unclear whether or not this is a crew of three or just a crew of two. Um, I'm also thinking, where do they put all their crap? There's like no storage, no clearly defined storage bins. There's like a bustle rack on the back of the tank for like a rucksack, maybe. Maybe a backpack, that thing's tiny. Um, this looks like it is a direct response to the US's Booker. So you can surmise that this has a 105 millimeter main gun. Uh, it's gonna be most likely about 35 to 40 tons max. Look at the road wheels. The road wheels are pretty small, which would indicate that this thing is a lighter vehicle. The side profile of the vehicle shows that this thing has cameras all over it. You can see it on the front. So you can tell it's, it's got some pretty good surveillance capabilities so that the crew can, you can see what's around them. Um, that's pretty good. So it's kind of like a hybrid between the Booker and the T-14 Armada concept where the crew would remain in the hull and in that capsule. Also with the Abrams X kind of took a page out of that, but it's, it's unclear whether or not Russia's T-14 was kind of like stolen from the Abrams X package or what kind of industrial espionage was happening there but I digress. Overall, this is a really interesting capability to uh, their, their light tank fleet. This is somewhat different from the Type 15, really built this thing to be a 21st century fighter. They're really forward thinking. They're trying to get this thing out there, getting it to market. Now, we also need to remember that China is the world's workshop. Uh, their industrial capability is such that they are able to produce things at a rate much quicker than, than other countries potentially. But from the external images that we're seeing currently, this is what I've kind of extrapolated from this, that it's got a, a bore evacuator system that is kind of integrated into the gun system, similar to the XM360. It's got an integrated APS. It's got cameras all over it. It's got a crew of potentially two or three. It's unknown whether or not a third crew member is going to be in the turret to feed the autoloader, troubleshoot, and maintain the gun system. Um, it's got a crosswind sensor, possible battlefield management uh, sensor or radio radio uh, antenna, the surveillance package for cameras, and you know I keep harping on that APS. APS is huge in the common battlefield. Also of note is that this thing is rumored to have a hybrid diesel electric power pack. Now that's going to help for silent watch capabilities where the vehicle it has the engine off, but it is running a the through electrical. It's able to do all of its surveillance. It's uh, the gunners are able to scan independently and identify targets. And then if they, if it, you know, if and when they determine there's a threat, they can then fire this thing up, 
uh, move up into offlate, engage, move back into defilate, seek an alternate fighting position, however they, however they do things. And that is also going to overall reduce the thermal signature because you're not going to have a massive heat bloom from that diesel motor uh, from that other tanks, that reconnaissance aircraft are, and drones are going to be able to identify. If this thing's just sitting there cold, it's going to be very, very hard to see, especially if it's using, if you're, they're using live camouflage and other thermal mitigation cloaks that are out there to uh, reduce the overall thermal signature of this vehicle. Thanks for watching. We'll have more later.